Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be going over the process of sewing and just generally putting together a bodice. I made this one for my fairy costume, but it also works really well for any sort of renaissance-y or pirate kind of costume. So I have this bodice that fits me really well. It so here I have the bodice and then the pieces I cut out based on the bodice. So this piece is obviously goes here, this piece is here to the other side, so that piece is accounting for this space here as if the ties were not there. And then this last piece is the back, just folded in half. I had to tie these super tight and I thought that Having no seam allowances between this one to this one meant that the ties across would be larger when I had it closed, but the problem with that is it still makes a significant difference. So I will be cutting down the sides, just a straight line on either side, to put in the side stitching that I decided to neglect earlier, just so that it will give me a little bit more wiggle room with the sizing. So here I have the sides cut, and I will be using this brown fabric for the outside. It has this fun embroidery, and I'm going to be using as much of the embroidery parts as possible to give the bodice more life. Now that I've cut out all the pieces and sewn them together for both of the bodices, I will put them right sides together and sew them along the outsides. This is where you may want to put in boning. So to do that, you will need to sew on either side of this seam to create a channel, leaving enough space on either side that's about a pinky's width, really, is how much you want to sew. So you want to sew one line here and one line here, so that you can then slide a boning. I am thinking about putting boning in this, but I don't have any boning, so if I can find something in my house to use, then I will put a little bit of boning. So I started sewing along the edge, so I have from here all the way around down to the same spot on the other side because I wanted to not go too far in case I was deciding to add a boning channel and then subsequently add boning. But I've decided to not add boning just because I'm going to be wearing this as a fairy costume and I'm just not sure that I really want that much structure when I'm going to be moving around a lot. Uh, I do advise if you're adding boning, you want to have it here because you're going to have eyelets there, here, again because of the eyelets, also just adds general structure, especially with the eyelets, and then also here. Actually, that's a really good point. It, it adds a lot of structure with eyelids. So if I don't have boning on the sides where I have eyelids like here, and here, and here, then it just won't be as structured. Well here I'm not too worried because I actually have two layers of the brown fabric on this piece. And then I only have one layer of the brown fabric on this piece. Actually, you can kind of see it. Um, maybe I should have used two. I thought it wouldn't be very see-through. It'll be less see-through when it's on the flipped over on the wrong side. So I think that the stability here will be fine. The stability here won't be as favorable. But so this is the bodice um, laid out flat right now. I still need to top stitch it so that um, when you when you see it from the brown side you only see brown and not this like very colorful inner fabric that I ended up using. So I will have to do that 
after I iron it because ironing it will significantly help your ability to top stitch. Like this looks pretty fine, but if I iron it, it'll make sure that I'm not like accidentally getting a part that I didn't mean to get. Um, turning it inside out was a bit of a hassle because I had left a open spot here at the bottom where you see this pin, but these channels here for the across your shoulder, these were really small for me and I didn't think about how hard it would be to take this section through a channel this big, so oh, I had to open up the side to be able to turn this part inside out as well, so um, you know, think about that a little bit more than I did. Otherwise, I will iron this, but I- So after spending some quality time with my iron, the seams have all been flattened, and just the whole thing, I'm not sure if it shows up well on camera, but it it's less bulky, so the ironing makes a huge difference. I don't know if you've heard that a million times already, but believe me, it really, really does. So the whole thing actually feels like a few layers of fabric and not like we made it out of a few layers of felt. Um, so for the most part, all of the showing sides, especially where it was hit with the iron quite a few times, are only the brown part. Some of the colors peeked through just the way I had cut it. Not perfect. So, <laughs> whatever. So I'm gonna do uh, some top stitching. I kind of don't want to do top stitching. I feel like it looks pretty good as is. So as long as it holds up, I won't need to do any top stitching. But I kind of want to stitch a uh, top stitch and then another side as if I'm sewing a channel here for to surround like either side of where the eyelets are going to be on this part and this part but at the same time improvisation so once I got to a point that doesn't allow for much improvisation about lacing so anything that would require putting things in between these two layers. I then decided to look at how many eyelets I have, and apparently I have nine eyelets. So if I want even amounts, I have eight to work with, four on each side. I set them approximately here. That's not a quite, quite even. I will measure this to be sure, but even with the four that I have set out, it's just, it doesn't look like enough. So I will probably do something different, either get more eyelets, which is highly unlikely because it's quarantine, or I will do some sort of like buttonhole eyelet, like fake eyelet sewing buttonhole kind of thing. Like, so I drew in where I want to stitch my eyelets on the side of the fabric that won't be seen and I will then just stitch in the eyelets using this embroidery thread. It's kind of a burgundy color so I think that will look nice with the brown and if I do ever decide to flip it over and it's a slow process but the worst part is I'm terrible at it. So. I so I was noticing a problem with the lacing here and I changed something on one side and not the other so you can see this side is remaining uh, like an actual edge whereas this side is starting to buckle as I pull on it so I actually put a like kind of insulated wire because that's what could fit since I didn't plan ahead a lot um, between here and the eyelets and this side I haven't yet so when I had mentioned that boning might be important even if you skip it here on the like structured part you do need something here if you don't want the lacing to buckle and pull together so that you get like this and loose. So here's the final product. 
I really like the amount of lacing that you can see. You can really see the little X's that I laced in there. And I want to note that if you don't have a bodice to work with, you can always use a fitted shirt to understand where you would need some of the lines for the shaping of the bodice. Thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. And remember to like this video if you enjoyed it. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.